Welcome to the Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is November 17th, 2019, and we're going to go over some stocks we talked about last week and some stocks we're going to be watching this week. Miss Vegas, did you have a nice weekend? Yeah, so far so good. So uh, looking forward to the rest of the day and look forward to this coming week. Um, you know, we do know, you know, we're still waiting on the China trade talks update. Um, I heard, I was reading that um, they did have a call on Saturday and um, apparently um, Robert Lithizer was on the call and Steve Munichin were on the call. They were talking about court issues for the first phase with regards to initial trade agreement and they've agreed to continue maintaining dialogue so again still waiting for details and information like everyone else and so we'll see what the week wants to show us um you know the markets continue to rise into the end of earnings season um all three indices hit new all-time highs yet again last week we did mention last week that clear move with indicators continue to be positive with, again, the final days of earnings coming up. We are watching to see the follow through following earnings and into the Christmas season. We also mentioned last week that the spread between the highs and the 50 day moving averages is growing to levels that we are calling for a small potential pullback. So definitely going to be watching the ES future, Dow futures and the NASDAQ. Um, also, gold showed some weakness, um, stalled out at the 1450 level, which is now a short term support, resistant around the 1500s and follow through if we get to the 1530s level. Um, so we'll see what's happening this week in the market. So let's just wrap up actually, Jim, some of the calls we did last week. Uh, so we definitely had a call with Nike. Uh, very impressive move. I got to tell you guys, I mean, this is why I love, again, options for small accounts. Um, we had a Nike call that was alerted on November the 8th, which was a Thursday. And this was a swing trade call because we said this doesn't even expire till November 15. So you had, you know, almost a week over a little over a week, a week and a day um, to hold on to the contract. And Jim noticed the, um, I guess, low of Nike's price. And so this looks like a good opportunity here for a swing. So we did take a Nike call and they were 26 cents, $26 for one contract. And look at this on Friday, they shot up as high as $255 each, over 800% gains potential on Nike if you were able to, you know, hold through that. I mean, I know people mentioned uh, in the chat that they sold some of these Nike calls. A lot of them sold at a dollar. Um, some people sold at 125 um, and maybe levels in between. And some of them, a few, I think, held into the $2 range, but unbelievable move. So congrats to the Nike traders. Um, the next one was the Lululemon. Again, another great opportunity from a reversal. Uh, Lulu's been really strong. It's not even really like this. Again, another um, amazing swing. I mean, it was alerted on Wednesday, 28 cents, went as high as a dollar on Friday for a two-day swing. Again, over 200%. Uh, gains and the, one of the, my favorite ones was the spy. Uh, we alerted the spy, and and for those of you that may not know, you can trade the spy and the IWM until 4:15 Eastern Standard Time. So the other um, stocks um, you can only trade till four o'clock on Option Land, uh, but these ones in particular till 4:15. Um, we did alert this at 4:12 because we saw a block trade come through on options and we said you know what something's going on why is this trader betting $125,000 that for contracts expiring the next day so we followed the money flow and the contracts were only 17 cents on Thursday night we were able to get filled on last minute orders just before the close like I mean we're talking like you know three minutes um, and you know the orders get filled really quick so it doesn't take long to put the order in and look at that as high as 85 uh, dollars per contract. This trader who had um, $125,000 in the flow of the money, he turned that into over $400,000. That is just an amazing trade he made. Um, but look, I mean, we made over uh, up to almost 400% 
per trade uh, on this trade. Uh, many people sold at the 100, 200, 300 percent levels, and congratulations to you guys again. Love these options, making people so much money. So congratulations. Okay, so let's talk about the picks for the week, Jim. So let's talk about FCEL. Um, you know, FCEL had some news not too long ago on November 11th, which was Monday. And they basically talked about how the company's going to um, position themselves with a transformation strategy. Uh, they did mention that... Um, they had uh, engagements with Huron Consulting. So this company's helping them restructure the business. And uh, they decided to, um, you know, they're going to have an eight-year, $200 million corporate loan facility with Orion Energy Partner. And um, they also have going to have an expanded uh, development agreement with Exxon Mobil to enhance their carbon capture technology. Um, I think uh, this stock here, Excel, is one to watch. Um, they're going to have a um, conference call in the beginning of the new year on January 14th, 2020. They're going to basically review the financial performance of the company. They're going to talk about the pillars of their strategy. And also, they have a new appointed President and CEO Jason Few. So we look forward to Jason, um, you know, talking and speaking and giving an update on what is happening with this company. But you know, FCL's had a nice little run. It's pulled back, but again, I think people are going to be looking for opportunities on any pullbacks that this stock has. Um, I think people will be buying this and accumulating it um, if it does hold the seventies level. Um, there could be a continuation, but you know, it's had a little run already, uh, but definitely I think dips are one to watch for. Um, so definitely add to your watch list. And Jim, I'd love to hear about this chart on FCEL. Yeah, we definitely are turning around in the last couple of weeks. We had a 21 cent low on it and she found mm -hmm. support right around the 22 area, 23 cent area, somewhere right in there. That's where she found support. And then ever since then, she's had a real nice run back on pre-market back on oh eleven six, and then she consolidated pulled back and then had another great run for last week and ran all the way up to looked like a buck now she's down here 81 cents so i'm looking at a 20-day chart let's look at the 20-day chart we have a low support level here right at 54.22 that'll be a strong buy and then maybe your your second area will be this little channel right in here up to 65 cents so that's going to be your second low support and then your first one's going to be right in here right around 7361 and if she pulls back to that 7361 that's going to be your first support level and i'm going to turn that in red so i can remember that come monday because we're not in the trade right now but you can see where we pulled back right here and then we pulled back right here which is like a triple double com confirmation that it can pull back to that 7361 resistance that we got to break is going to be up here right around the 93 or 9364 areas where I'm going to go ahead and put the bottom line on that and then you know it'll go up to a dollar but our three support levels that first one's going to be right here right around that 5422 that second one's going to be in this channel between 58 and 65 and that first one's going to be right here at 73 61 for a strong buy but we do also have a support level here at 7838 but if it knifes and it gets to that red line i'll probably jump in it small if not i'll wait for it to pull back to this 58 5883 area that's f cell and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be obln yeah so you know what i haven't talked about this one in a little while you know this is the company that they have that fda approved swallowable swallowable <laughs> gastric uh balloon and it's to assist people with that have not had success with weight loss and this is a great um you know product uh in terms of you know not having to do gastric bypass surgery you know you would basically swallow this and the balloon would stay um, in you for about six months at the most and then it, it would have to get removed and now I didn't really review how they remove it but 
uh, nevertheless, I bring this one to your attention because a couple things going on. I mean, the CEO recently purchased 65,000 shares of the stock. Jim can show you that. Uh, he did that November the 12th. He paid one, um, looks like one uh, 66 per share. And so um, he is accumulating his own company stock. And also uh, this coming week, Wednesday and Thursday, the company will be presenting at the um, Sift, uh, Stifel Healthcare Conference and also at the Canaccord Medical Technologies Forum. Uh, both these events are in New York. So I'm sure we'll be hearing updates from the conference. We might see some activity on the stock. So definitely a stock to watch. Uh, some people already like it, my understanding from a swing trade. I don't have a position in this at this time, but I will be looking at this and maybe looking at this one for definitely a swing trade. Uh, considering that there's some action happening this week. So keep this on your watch. And Jim, let's hear about uh, OBLN uh, supports and resistances. Well, you sure, you sure can spot these good trades. So let's pull up OBLN. We're going to look at the yearly and also the 20 day. We're also, here's another yearly bottom that we're looking at here at 152 last week. And now we're at 171. So yeah, we've got a lot of room for this thing to go up. Did have a high there at $34, and she's pulled all the way back to $152 for a yearly bottom. Look at earnings for a second here and see what that says. That might be a little bitty revenue, not too high. So, yeah, this is going to be one that I want to play back on a pullback support area. I see another one right here, maybe right at $163 for your first support. That second one's going to be at $158. That first one here is at $145. The resistance, if it decides to go up, that resistance level is going to be right in here at 177 to 179. With your other resistances here on the 20 day, right up here to about uh, just under two bucks. So that's the way I'm going to look at it. I'm going to see how the volume kicks in Monday. See if there are any other indicators. If it wants to beat off the 200, let me show you what I mean by the 200. I always use that as a support level. Right now we're at 171, so there's really not much of a difference. We do have the 9 crossing over, the 34 and the 200 EMA. So, yeah, we could break, think of bring run up all the way and break that 175 resistance that we saw on Friday. But low support, 145, resistance to break. Let me pull this back to the 20 day. Yeah, low support right around the 158, 163 area. Resistance to break is going to be that 179, 177, 179, and bring it up to these other three resistances. And that's OBLN, the next one that I think is undervalued right now, and that's Microsoft. Oh, my gosh. I have been eyeing this for weeks. I traded this uh, in the options side on Microsoft, and you know what? Made good money on this. And I got to tell you, I mean, this stock's been making new 52 week highs, beautiful pocket pivot. This is definitely overbought. Um, you know, this 150 seriously did finally print Friday, very, very last minute towards the end of the day, but we really need to see this have a nice continuation. Um, you know, with regards to Microsoft, um, they did have uh, a partnership with Alliance Partners, actually Alliance Partners partners with Microsoft, and they're the, looking to transform the insurance industry. And what they're going to do is they're going to be doing a lot of stuff into the cloud. So what they've done is they've teamed up with Microsoft. Uh, they're going to leverage the cloud platform to help them digitalize the insurance industry. And with this partnership, they want to offer advanced insurance self-service solutions on Microsoft's Azure. And this is also an exciting opportunity for both larger insurers that need to replace their legacy IT companies and even like smaller players um, also looking for a scalable insurance platform. Uh, so it looks like, you know, once Alliance is starting to use Microsoft's um, platform, I mean, I think that's going to be fantastic. It's going to make other companies probably want to follow suit. So I think this is great for Microsoft and uh, look forward to seeing this company 
um, you know, continue. I mean, I think Microsoft is undervalued. Uh, I mean, they're just so advanced in so many areas, and especially with this cloud, still, again, such a powerful uh, platform. I think Microsoft is definitely uh, one of the leaders um, amongst, there's other ones as well, but I think they're one that is definitely one to watch. Um, I think there's a good opportunity here for Microsoft to have a nice move and Jim, I want to hear all about that. Yeah, it looked to me like somebody, Microsoft option trader, bets $1 million on a 10% more move to the upside. Wow, that's and, a lot of money. Yeah, and it's really been on a good 20-day run also, too. You keep that in mind, $15, $15 run in 20 days. So we got an ascending triangle right in here where we had that little breakout that ran into Friday. So I'm going to put me in a little trend line right around here for support level on top of that. And I'm going to change that to a red line, 147.46. That kind of gives me an indication maybe that's going to be our first support. And I always look for pullbacks on any trade that I look into because, you know, I just don't like to rush into a trade and let them come to me. I got a 148.74 also on here. It looks to me like we actually went up after hours on Microsoft. So let me pull up this 20 day now. We had a, yeah, I mean, Friday we had that great run from the, that second support area, which is right around 148.74. That first one's where that ascending triangle breakout started here on a two day. And you can see what happened, and we've had a good two-day run on it. So resistance, we got a break. It's going to be right up here, and I'm going to pull that up to a daily one minute. I can get a better reflection on where I want to put that resistance level. And there's one right here. I'm just going to go ahead and plop it down right there. And we got another one right up in here. I'll plop it down right there. And then we got a support level right down here. Oh, and a real strong one right here. So let me pull up this 20-day now. I'm drawing these up as I'm talking to you. Definitely have had a nice little 20 day run. Called this out down here when it had that little confirmation of the double bottom. And she ran up and found a resistance level and created a little sending triangle right in here, even. And had the last six days had a nice little six day run from that 144.26. So your low support for right now, I'd really like this to hold here. At 147.46, that's about a $2.50 drop. I don't want to see it go any lower than that. And then your other little support levels will be off this 34 maybe here at 148.67. That'll be the other sending triangle breakout that it had. And that was on Thursday morning, Friday morning. And she ran all the way up. So that first support's going to be right here at 149.35. And let's pull this up. I'm going to go ahead and put that 139.45. I'm going to flag that as your first support level. Microsoft, I've traded. I haven't had a bad trade with it yet. I usually get all out of it on an engulfing candle and then get back in on the dip. But this looks pretty good. So that first support level or that low support at 147.46, that First, second support, 148.74, and that first one here at 149.35 with a resistance to break at 150.04, and that's Microsoft. And the next one we really like trading a lot that I have on my watch list every day, and that's Tesla. Miss Vegas? Yes, I'm ready. All right. I'm going to talk to you guys about Tesla again because, you know, um, Elon Musk did reveal that um, the next factory, and it's going to be located near Berlin, Germany. And, um, you know, some people are thinking, why would he open up a factory there? Well, you know what? We don't know why. He's uh, This is the uh, fourth uh, facility following the one in Nevada, California, New York, and China. So, um, you know, they, he did mention back in October that he expects to make the Model 3 sedans and the upcoming Model Y SUVs, <coughs> excuse me, at its European factory which will begin production in 2021. 
and he's also building an engineering and design facility in Berlin. So, I mean, this is just amazing. I mean, Tesla, you know, a lot of haters on Tesla. Um, you know, this also did get an upgrade not too long ago to $400. And, you know, if you actually look at the Tesla chart, I mean, that itself tells you the story, what's going on with Tesla. I mean, it has its moments where it does run. It does have the pullbacks, but you know what? When it does, I always look at Tesla as an opportunity. Um, it does have, uh, you know, uh, narrow range um, in this in the stock. It's had some range contraction. I think it's ready for an expansion. But again, uh, you know what? The market's liking Tesla. So no matter what you're hearing out there, you got to just ignore the noise. And, um, you know, the market's looking to see that, you know, Tesla is going to be is profitable and uh, believes in this company. And the analyst has given it some upgrades. And uh, so far, you know, Tesla's over that 350. So that's important. You know, I remember Tesla, Jim, was in the 300s. Yep. Um, and it's made huge strides. And so definitely want to still watch and uh, continue. Uh, definitely I know a lot of people long, long, long on Tesla and any dips they see, they're grabbing. So, um, Jim, let's hear about Tesla. I'm bullish in Tesla just as much as I was bullish with Roku when everybody was bashing Roku down. And mm. they can't they can't bring it down to 60. And that's the same thing with Tesla. Now, we called this pullback when it was right around 178, 177 right down here. And we said this was a strong buy to get in this stock and maybe trade it and you can see what happened when we called that out it ran all the way and hit that 200 EMA and then pulled back started consolidating for about three months and then we had that big breakout off that 200 again and now we're sitting above the nine respectfully with major respect breaking back up to break that resistance level yeah this is going to go to 376 64 no problem but I don't know when but I'm getting more bullish on it. You know, it, when this drama was going on here, it was all against Musk and his tweets. He's kind of pulled back on that. And he's let the company do in its role now, and it's and it's run on up. So we have a low support right here, and I'm going to go ahead and mark this line in at the 339.56. And I'll show you why I call that a support area. Because we had this double top right here, for example. And then back over in here, we also had a little consolidation where it started showing some resistance levels. And we're back getting back up in there, and we broke past that. So the next resistance that we got to get to is going to be right here at that 355. That's perfect. 355.45, as you can see right over here, where we've had a little bit of consolidation, that 355.45 area. And that's where we are at the end of the year right now as of Friday run up and hit that 355 45 area now she's kind of pulled back to an equilibrium or a pivot point to that low support which is going to be that number right there and let's go ahead and pull up the 23 year first i mean this thing's way oversold that's three months or it was was oversold now we're back up into this 300 dollars channel again from 300 to 376 it actually did have a nice little high right up here, right around the 386.58 area. So, yeah, first support is going to be strong support here at 340.76. If that doesn't hold, it can pull back to this area right in here, right around the 330, just a little under 330. Resistance to break is going to be that 355.45 and bring it up to the next resistance levels. I'll be calling these out in the room, so please follow and join our room for a free week free <laughs> free week trial we also have right here we have another resistance level right here at 360 so that's going to be our next target to hit it's going to be just under that 360 with that low support at 340 and that's tesla one to watch it follows in trends i'm going to show you what i mean by one day just give it time don't try to rush into the trade because it always has a little tendency of pulling back. You can see if you follow the trends and look for the indicators for the reverse, you could probably get in there. But the double top is going to be right around this area right in here, right around that 352.68.
And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be AMD. AMD. Well, first of all, I got to tell you, Lisa Sue, as you guys know, she is the CEO of AMD, and she is one hell of a smart executive. She knows what she's doing. Markets loving what she's doing with the company. Uh, she's very intelligent. You know, she got a PhD. Uh, she's from MIT. You know, she graduated from there back in 1986. I mean, she loves working with semiconductors she was one of the first researchers when she was um doing her phd at mit on the silicon on insulator which is soi technology she loves fixing problems and when she worked at ibm she was promoted to a vice president and she is um extremely extremely smart and she's the right person for amd and to make this company a good company and she's doing a great, great job. And we can see it in the reflection of the price of the stock. And um, most recently, uh, there was an article about AMD's Ryzen uh, continues to outsell Intel Core CPUs in the South Korean markets. They reached 53% market share the first time in history. That is just absolutely incredible. Um, so I think AMD is one to still watch. It's still ready to go higher. Also, AMD, I wanted to tell you guys, uh, AMD did get some upgrades. And let me just double check what they were. But the upgrades that AMD did get um, from Royal Bank, uh, they upgraded the stock to 50 and also there was um, some block trades going through on AMD and they also had news at the beginning of November that they did introduce the world's, this is very important, the world's fastest high-end desktop processor with the third gen Ryzen Threadripper um, delivering unmatched performance and no compromises and let me tell you these block trades that I have witnessed over the past few weeks since in the month of November, they have not been like, you know, 200,000 shares, 500,000 shares. I am talking one block trade was 1.225 million and the other block trade which happened on November the 12th was for $4.8 million, sorry, 4.8 million shares and they paid them. 36.65 so that is massive money flow going into the stock and i'm not going to be surprised if i see amd in the 40s and later on won't be surprised when it gets to 50 bucks in terms of a longer term investment i think amd is great and uh in my personal opinion again do your own due diligence we're not licensed advisors uh, but I'm just telling you just my own personal thoughts from everything I read and everything I'm seeing with the money flow. And I love to follow money um, in these stocks. And people are, the hedge funds are putting the money in here. Um, and Jim, let's hear about AMD because you actually like AMD very much yourself. Oh, yeah. We've, we've called this, this is one of our daily lookers, that's for sure. We called this stock out here when it was down right around this double bottom area, right under 10 bucks. So this mm -hmm. thing was going to run to 30 and we had a wonderful run on this trade and then she started pulling back and then we started re-talking about it again and she's ran up and hit that double top area at 34 so that 34 was a real hard resistance that we needed to break here on the three years she did pull back to that 34 and then here in the last five days just a beautiful five day track of and then friday it had that great big gap up too on friday which was about three three four bucks so yeah, this was a beautiful trade. I'm just I had to clear it up, put new trend lines in here. That's what I'm doing right now. Try to find some resistance levels. So let's pull up the yearly. Right there was a three year. This is a one year daily. Got a little support right down here. There's another one right in here somewhere. Yeah, right there, perfect. And I got another one right in here. What I'm trying to do is consolidate candles where they have trends or consolidated periods on the bases and not the wicks. And it gives you more of a true perception of where the resistance and supports are. 
So we have a low support. What I'm looking at on the yearly chart right here, this support area right in here. And that could be a little bit higher. Yeah, I'm going to bring it up to 34. 34. 3444 is going to be that low support area that we want to see if we want to get in this trade. We don't want to chase it. We want to wait for it to pull back after last week's run. Plus, after the last month and a half, it can pull back a little bit. That second strong resistance level, support level, is going to be here at 3627. I'm going to chalk that one up. And then that first one probably right around this 3744 area. And I'm going to put that down as a first support area. And then we're going to go to a 20 day and see if I see anything different. So we'll change this to a 20 day now. Yeah, I do see a little consolidating right in here. Looks a little better. Okay, so this is how I'm going to read this chart. No lower than 3444. It can hit through $34. That's where it kind of had that breakout. That second support level is going to be here at 3631. And then that first one can be right in this channel right in here, right around the, the 3744 area to the 3779 with a resistance to break at 39. I do believe this is another one that's undervalued with the process and the, and the, the great work from the CEO of this company has really brought this out of uh, I don't know, turmoil, I wouldn't say that, but she's really brought it brought it to new highs. So the resistance we got a break is going to be at 39.05, and that low support, I don't want to see it go no lower than 34, 34.44. You can stop these videos at any time and write these supports numbers. Just always remember they come from I Love Stocks. And then we've got one more that's been beat up by the shorters and the skinny men, and that's going to be bind. B -Y -N -D. Oh, yeah. You know what? This bind, there was a, a great article that came out um, from William Blair, and they said that they see the phased rollout at McDonald's. So, you know, they're still bullish. There's, you know, pilot program between Beyond Meat and McDonald's. You know, I thought it started back in September. Then I don't know what happened to it. I think it stopped. But they're still running a test program in Canada. And they're looking to eventually expand it into a phased rollout of the plant-based meat at McDonald's restaurants. So what they're doing is like a small test um, in 28 stores in Ontario, Canada. Um, supplied by Beyond Meat. Uh, they will transition to a larger test in the United States. Uh, eventually, there will be a phased rollout of a plant-based burger to McDonald's location in the U.S. and perhaps globally is what they said. Um, now, Beyond Meat shares, we saw pullback. Um, and, you know, back in September, like I said, McDonald's did announce that it was beginning a 12-week Beyond Meat burger pilot across 28 restaurants in Ontario. And it looks like Beyond Meats and McDonald's have been closely collaborating for some time. And it looks like maybe they are encouraged by the success of the plant-based meat products at other restaurant chains. Um, so we have to see what's going on. Um, we also see one of the analysts from Jeffrey's note that the st uh, boosted the stock price target to 190 from 115, said the stock's a hold. Um, none of these notes have been very positive in the past. I mean, Wells Fargo said that they brought it down from 125 down to $100. So again, uh, we see a pullback here on Beyond Meat. So is this an opportunity? Uh, you know what, Jim? Let me hear what you think about this because you've traded this extremely well every single time. And I know you're watching this one very closely. So let's hear what you think about Beyond Meats. Yeah, I was thinking we hit bottom last week when we hit that 73.85 area. But we did definitely pull back more from what my support was and that was right around the $88 area and then last couple weeks last on this 20 day chart you can see it did kind of pull back and hit that 73.85 actually I have a 76.11 you could also probably have another support right here at 74.64 but we got a break of resistance of 84.28 so 
I'm going to have this on high alert next week. I want to see it retrace and back bounce up here to about 89.90. I'm not going to go out on a branch and say this is going to go back to 100, but I do appreciate uh, Beyond Meat taking their trial to the United States. I didn't think Canada was good enough for the trial. So they've had pretty good success with uh, that Whopper burger that's come out they've had real good success with that and that's not that has nothing to do with BYND but it does tell you that the competition out there is starting to lighten up a little bit and they're starting to get into this uh, healthy burger kind of deal so it's just a little competition I think that's why one of the reasons why it kind of pulled back a little bit and but we do have a hard resistance up here right around the 103 area but that 9633 is going to be your resistance that we're going to try to get to. But we need to break the 89. Well, actually, we need to break this 8428 to bring it to that next 8955. So you're looking at $5 increments as this thing rises up. If we can break this resistance of 8428, that's very important. But we are showing some positive diversion. As you can see, it, we had that low of 7385 and it closed at... 80.81 so right there's a good six dollar bounce six dollar so dollar bounce i mean so so yeah i think we kind of might have hit a bottom but we got to break that resistance of 84.28 and that's bynd i have this watch on watch every day and i got in it i think friday and scalped it i didn't scalp it for a lot of money but i i want to also talk about my challenge that i have i started up when it was right about 800 about four weeks ago and then i run it all the way to 61 in the last couple of weeks i had a pullback and it's at now fifty five thousand five hundred and fifty nine dollars and 89 cents so this will be monday will be the fifth week into the challenge and i've been swinging trades mostly and then if i can get away with it i'll do three scalps a week but I'm going to try to bring it up to 25000 by the end of the year. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I'm saying it can happen. Just have confidence in yourself, and that's it. And, Miss Vegas, you have anything else you'd like to say? Well, you know what, Jim? I know that I'm pretty confident you'll be able to do that because, you know, I mean, we had some phenomenal runners. I mean, look at Disney earlier this week. We didn't even talk about Disney today because, I mean, we'd be on this YouTube for hours. But, I mean, Disney had a phenomenal run over a 1,000% uh, same day runner. And, yep. uh, I mean, you know, people that have small accounts made thousands of dollars that day. So, I mean, sometimes it's just waiting for the right opportunity to come. And then you know what? You go in and you can make phenomenal returns um, with these option opportunities at the right time uh, also. So uh, I know that you can do it. So I yeah. think that's great. Uh, so everyone, have a great week. Follow, subscribe, and come visit us uh, for your free trial. And again, you know, it's not just about giving alerts. I want to make one comment here. Um, you know, sometimes if you only want to get alerts, then, you know, there's other services out there that can do that. And it's a different price point, you know, uh, probably less than the $50. But, you know, you get the trial for a reason because we want you to experience uh, your experience in the room. It's not just about the alerts. It's also about giving you real-time educational content. And let me tell you, that is priceless because a lot of information that we explain, that we share is not something you can always just read in a book. It's in real time and it helps you learn. It's almost like you're in a classroom sometimes um, when you're in the chat, you know, so you are learning a lot and we're here on voice all day. So that's a lot of time commitment from myself and Jim. So if we were just to give alerts, we don't even need to be here all day. And you know, that is uh, priced at a different point, but you know, we're committed and we're here for it, people to trade together, bank together, learn together, and do well together as a team. So come on by. Love to meet you. And I love meeting new female traders. I've met so many great ones. And uh, have a great week, everyone. And see you tomorrow. All right. This is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, Sunday's edition, November 17th, 2019. I'm still bullish on the economy. Let's have a great week, and we love stocks.